How does a writer come up with story ideas? Whether you're suffering from writer's block or you're a new writer desperately looking for a story idea, we all need writing inspiration from time to time. In this video, I'm going to share my creative process, how I fill my creative well, and my ultimate secret for generating story ideas. What's up guys, my name is Michael Aram with Author Level Up, helping you write better and faster and grow your influence with readers. If you're new here, consider subscribing and click the little bell to get helpful writing videos every week. Sometimes I struggle to find a story idea for a novel, but more often than not, I struggle with story details. Where should my character go, or what should the villain look like? The tools I'm sharing in this video have helped me write over 30 plus novels and dozens of short stories without getting stuck for very long. Follow these tips and you'll never run out of ideas again. When you think about the creativity problem, break it down into three components. Think about your mind like a plant. A plant needs soil, water, and sunlight. Just like a plant needs healthy soil, your creative voice or muse or subconscious also needs a healthy environment in which to grow. This means creating a system where you foster your creativity, eliminate bad habits, and set aside time to think and reflect. You cannot beat writer's block unless you get your mind correct. That's tip number one. A plant also needs water, but it's a delicate balance, right? If you water it too much, you'll kill it, but if you water it too little, you'll starve it. A plant needs water on a regular schedule. Your mind also needs inspiration and motivation on a regular schedule. Reading on a regular basis is one surefire way to ensure a steady stream of inspiration to your mind. So is watching movies, television shows, or consuming any kind of media. But even if you water a plant on schedule, it can still wilt. So you have to do other things to keep it growing. Your mind is the same way. You need to have some tools in your arsenal for when writer's block strikes. I keep a digital notebook in Evernote for things that inspire me. I note the date and time, the item that inspired me, and when possible, I describe it in the five senses and include a photo, video, and ambient audio from the event. For example, the day before I recorded this video, I was at a birthday party at a local bar. And as I was entering, an African-American woman in a green floral dress was rushing behind me carrying a huge birthday cake. I held the door open for her and she said, thank you, sir, for your awareness. I appreciate it. I hold the door open for people all the time, but not once in my life has anyone ever said, thank you, sir, for your awareness. <laughs> That's memorable. I wrote that down with one guiding question. How would I write her into a science fiction or fantasy story? What's her background? What's she like? I did a sketch exploring what I thought this woman's life would have been like on my phone in just a couple of minutes while I was at the birthday party. The next time I need inspiration for a character, I might use that sketch. I've done this for over a decade and I have thousands and thousands of notes, little bits and pieces that I've picked up over the years. Some of them end up in my novels, but most are there just as mental exercises for me. If you'd like to see my sketchbook in action, I do publish them and perform them on my podcast, The Writer's Journey. You can find links to the podcast in the video description. But back to my plant analogy. A plant also needs sunlight, right? For your mind, think about this as getting out of your normal routine every once in a while. When you're in public, when you're traveling, when you're experiencing something new for the first time, observe with your senses and learn how to sharpen them. Be a student of people and places. For example, my family went on a summer vacation to San Antonio, Texas. We visited the famous San Antonio Riverwalk. As we drove there, I imagined how I would write San Antonio into a story if I ever wanted to. We did the touristy thing and we paid for a Riverwalk boat tour. Under the moonlit shaded mall, we boarded a riverboat and sat back as the guide drifted down the San Antonio River. We heard the history of the city, learned of its rich heritage and unique architecture on the Riverwalk district. We floated by the most amazing buildings, each one lit up in its own unique way. It's like all the buildings were in competition for our attention. Office buildings, bars, retail shops, all trying to stand out and be different. Colored waves of light shimmered on the dark water. Several times, as mist landed on my neck, I had to keep reminding myself that I was in the desert. After the tour, we went to a famous Mexican restaurant called Mi Tierra, which to this date is the biggest sensory overload that I've ever experienced. There were so many colors and lights that I couldn't concentrate on my food. I'll never forget the endless tinfoil flags and colorful patio lights festooned over every table. And the bakery had the most amazing Mexican sweetbreads, conchas, bear claws, dessert empanadas, and more. And there were hundreds of piñatas hanging over the bakery, twirling in the air conditioning as we ordered our treats. 
When I was here, I kept telling myself, this is a once in a lifetime experience. And so I observed and I paid attention. And here I am showing you camera footage and reciting my sketchbook notes almost verbatim for you guys just to prove my point. <laughs> That's how this works. Live your life, pay attention, take notes. And when you've been doing this as long as I have, when you're stuck in your next work in progress, all that hard work will be there waiting for you. So that's how you stay creative as a writer. Be a plant. Develop consistent practices that ensure you will be creative, capture every moment of inspiration that strikes, and give yourself permission to do something different and unique. Do that and writer's block will be nearly non-existent for you. That's it for this video. If this is your first time watching, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every week I publish videos just like this one with writing advice to help you write better and grow your influence with readers. I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.